Riven, Dr. Mundo, and Annie, whereas Purple Team's banned out Kassadin, Nasus, and Jinx. All of those are really, really powerful solo queue champions right now. That being said, I've actually seen Annie pretty much fall off the map since all of the initial outcry. I don't know about you, I, I see that you have been grinding out towards Diamond a little bit. Uh, ha have you seen her still played that often? Uh, I see her played, but not as often as she used to. I think that, um, really, since, uh, since, that, since the spring split, um, people started realizing Karma support is actually a pretty solid counter to any support. Yeah, and, so and I've been saying that for a little while, but I think, to me, it's not only the rise of Karma, it's that people are finally realizing that Leona is kind of broken right now. So all of the Annie players have switched back to Leona, and anyone who wanted a traditional support was dealing with her better because they're playing Karma now. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, I mean, I still think that Leona, I mean, Annie's still strong, it's just that now she's just not, like, insta-pick because Leona is essentially the same amount of CC, it's just, it's just a bit of a weaker laning phase early on, but once the level three, they're pretty even on. For sure, yes. Uh, as far as picks and bans go, we have Requine playing Fizz. Uh, she actually does play a bit of Fizz. I, I was playing a game with her yesterday, and she did. We have a Karma support, a Poppy top, which we don't see very often, but is a, a very powerful pick if you can survive the laning phase. She is one of the, the better hyper carries. That being said, usually you would expect to see a Poppy running Ghost, not Flash. Uh, it's just a um, far more reliable pickup for summoner skills. Uh, we then have a, a Caitlyn who, who pairs up pretty well with Karma because you have a very, very high amount of harass, and Caitlyn is fairly self-sufficient in terms of peel. And then, of course, we have Shivana Jungle, who's kind of silly OP right now, both in top lane and jungle, but eh, it's a solid, solid pick. Purple team, we have playing Anivia. I, I don't know what it is with workshops. We always seem to get Anivia players, but whatever. Uh, Wukong top, Nami support, Draven, AD carry, and a Vi jungle. Uh, feel free to disagree with me, but... In my opinion, Vi is the best jungler in the game right now. Uh, am I incorrect um, in that? Oh, uh, you know, I think yeah, she's pretty solid. I'm gonna agree with you there. She's I, like people. She kind of fell off a little bit because she wasn't to be. She wasn't like she didn't have the ability to be as tanky as junglers like Shivana or Mundo. Mm -hmm. But she's still solid. She's definitely she has a lot of mobility. Her ultimate's really strong against uh, AD carries that don't have instant escapes like Jinx or Varus. But yeah, and they're so, so strong right now. Everyone's playing Jinx, Lucian, um, Sivir's still picked up a decent amount yeah. of the time. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, I still think she's a solid, she's still, she's definitely still a very strong jungler. I think mm -hmm. the problem is that junglers like Mundo and Shivana have just been kind of clouding her out. But I still think she's definitely a, a good pick. I, I think a lot of that clouding out, though, is people who want to play them because they're OP, but can't get top lane. Because the, <laughs> well, like if you really think about it, Mundo he's an okay jungler, but it's his top lane that's broken. Yeah, 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 I'll give you that. And so people are just like, well, I didn't get top lane, but he's still broken, so I guess I'll jungle. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. And I, it's interesting to see a Nami come out. Um, Nami has fallen off the map a little bit, but in my mind, that's a really good combo to go with Draven because you throw your E on Draven, and all of a sudden his axe are slowing. And then you you have your your range knock up. It, it's the it, to me it is a safe poke based Leona. For it, you have similar yeah. levels of CC to set up the Draven crazy DPS, but you have more utility to make sure that if you fall behind, you're not useless. Yeah, I, I think. Um... Hello. The fact is, your kid was a little bit weird because essentially the bubble, the bubble is a very odd mechanic because the travel time is pretty much the same regardless of where you throw it so it just it just feels weird but i apologize to the people in in the chat i i raised his volume now i had it set so that he was like music so it was really really low uh that is fixed now you should be able to hear him um yeah huh. nami became the number one support for a very very <laughs> brief window and then they changed everything about support and people stopped playing her again yeah yeah, uh, I mean, I still think that she's she's definitely definitely strong, but she's definitely not on level. No, I I don't think she's that strong a pick anymore. But as as a comboed with a Draven, I would say it's a very very good synergy there. Yeah, because they, they just Draven's pair up so also well. Really strong right now as well. I I think the top three eighty carries at the moment are probably for like solo use Draven, Jinx, and. Uh, Lucian, they're very strong right now. They have, they have a very solid laning phase. Jinx probably has like the weakest, the weakest of the three laning phase. But 
They're very strong in team fights. A good Draven is pretty much like God. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, as soon as I saw that they were nerfing Lucian and Sivir, I was like, oh god, it's going to be Draven all over again. Because if you want that really high lane potential, well, what are you yeah. going to play then? Jinx is okay in lane potential, but it's more about her crazy late game where you get one kill and you just snowball through with that crazy passive. Yeah, and her, yeah. cra her like attack speed and AoE crits, like it it's just a little much. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's... I'm going to do a quick peek at runes and masteries here just to see if there's anything out of the ordinary. Ooh. Fizz is running flat cooldown reduction, uh, flat magic pen, armor, and AP. I actually I kind of like that because you don't really need MR on mids anymore. A lot of people are opting to go towards either cooldowns or flat AP or, or something else because MR, it's nice, but it, it's not really mandatory anymore. Karma a little bit. Karma has a little bit weird runes. She's running mana regen instead of armor, so I, I would predict that she's going to get thrown around in that lane a little bit. If she ever gets caught by Nami Draven, she's going to die instantly. Also, she's running very, very heavy utility masteries. Personally, on Karma, I run nine twenty one zero. I don't think utility masteries are worth it on pretty much any support. Like you just don't bother going very deep into support anymore. It's just not worth it. Uh, Poppy, pretty standard. Caitlyn running just a little bit of attack speed and no armor on her. So I, I'm not sure if she just doesn't have a full rune page or what. I would also usually expect to see 2190 on, on 80 carries, but anything will work. Uh, okay, Gon's disconnected. Hopefully he'll be back. Shivana running 80 armor, lifesteal, magic resist per level. Pretty standard, 0921. Moves few quints on Anivia, really important because she does have really low, she has almost no mobility. So that, that's not a bad pickup at all. Uh, and then magic resist armor. You, that's going to be very, very powerful versus Fizz because if you can just stay out of range, you're going to be a lot more survivable. 6% uh, lifesteal, tw sorry, 21.90 on Wukong, pretty standard. Nami. Um, looks like she's building towards a flat health quint build, which is pretty good. I don't recommend 21 utility though. Uh, e even on Nami, I probably wouldn't. Draven running attack speed armor pen. I don't. I'm not a fan of attack speed. I don't know why people are doing that all of a sudden. I, it could be that it's worthwhile. So Sorry about that. Channel. Not a problem. <laughs> I would also suggest uh, Vi might want to invest in some attack speed reds so that she can proc her W more effectively. As we are loaded into game now, I will line up the names for everyone uh, before they start yelling at me, and we'll get into this game. Seconds until I gotta, I gotta restart my client. I'll okay. Be there. Yeah, you should just be able to spectate via me, right? Yeah, I should okay. be able to. Yes. Both junglers coming out with a really standard start. Poppy has opted for cloth armor. Personally, if I were Poppy, I would be going for a Doran shield. Doran shield will block a lot of the harass you're gonna take. It's going to regen you very, very effectively, and it's gonna make you tankier to deal with Wukong's incredibly potent level two and three. Like, Wukong, his early engages are really, really powerful. I also don't agree with Longsword on, on Wukong. I, if I were him, I'd probably be running Flask so I can get more combos and keep bullying Poppy out. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think both of those are a, a little bit odd. Uh, well, I think his idea is he's going to try to rush probably an early Brutalizer or possibly an early Hydra or um, a team up. So yeah, but like, usually if you only have one or two potions in lane and no defensive items... You're just going to lose trades to minions, usually. No, uh, I mean, the problem I, I'm seeing, what I'm going to foresee his problem is, he's, the thing is, Poppy, If he, he's going to need to go very aggressive on Poppy, because he needs to deny her, because once she hits level 6, if he doesn't have a kill and she's only in 10 CS behind, she's going to be able to kill him and yes. out-treat him. So he needs to go very aggressive. The problem is, if he has no pots, he's not going to be able to keep that harass up constantly. Yeah, and, and Wukong is very, very mana hungry, and that's why I almost always on Wukong will start Flask, because you just get your combo every single cooldown, just bully the metal lane constantly. I agree, that's, it's usually Flask is really good, um, if, if you can, if you're able to bully it out, but if you're against the champ, like if you're against the Renton, or oh, yeah, for uh, sure. Shivana. At, at that point, you're going to want just Doran's Shield standard top start. It looks like Karma has Win gone non-gold for 10 start, but she has picked up a Fairy Charm level 1. 
Um, I, I'm not opposed to that, but if you're going to go full consumables, I would usually pick up a level 1 pink ward so that you can guard your jungle. Uh, Nami has opted for a gold pretend start and is probably going to be playing a little bit more passive. So that's just a, a decision that they've opted to make. Uh, they, they did use exhaust for no reason onto karma support. I, I don't agree with that choice at all. Good bubble, but uh, again, just not quite in sync with the AD carry to actually set up a play. Honestly, that full consumable start is going to work out really well for Karma now because they have got Nami has almost no mana. She's half health, no potions. So her impact now that she's used exhaust and everything is going to be essentially none in this lane. Vi looks to be trying to gank Poppy top lane. I would go in behind Poppy. Going in from the the side there isn't really going to do anything. You're not going to get in and be yeah. able to do much. And, uh, and um, she really so when, so you so Vi really should have saved her Q. Um, I mean the, they're probably going to get this. Um, debatable, but since Poppy really doesn't have an escape, and since she's so far up, Vi really could have just walked up there and auto to slow yes. and saved Q for later. Completely agreed. Yeah, so Poppy did get out of that. That being said, that's why you usually run Ghost on Poppy, so if you do find yourself in that situation, you you just can't really be killed. Between your passive and Ghost, you're not really ever going to die. Yeah, I think um, I'm starting to favor Ghost on a lot of top champions, but that's mainly because I play Olaf, Shivana, Mundo. Mm -hmm. And those champions... Oh, are we going to see first blood? Oh, wow. Very, on the very last day of Ignite. Nice. So that's a huge advantage. Oh, they're coming in on to Requine mid. Stun misses, Vi Q misses. A very good troll pull coming out from Fizz. But it was a little bit sloppy from Purple Team, just not waiting to see where he was going to go before they used all their CC. I agree, yes. So we're going to see uh, Blue Team is really, ab really abusing this um, Straven Nami, because they did win that early trade. Mm -hmm. And that, that's why I so heavily favor full consumable start still. Because if you end up with one bad trade, well, uh, you're uh, you're um now. Every single bit of harass, you're literally just surviving lane, and that's it. You're not actually setting up any plays. And you only lose something like 160 gold for not starting with uh, a coin. Assuming you go back and buy it around level 5, 6. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Um... I, mean, I, I don't play bot lane very much, so I don't know the matchup as much. But I usually, I, I usually start coin though. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I, th that said, I usually play safe um, supports that don't really have. Can I usually play supports that have like escapes and stuff like that? So yeah. Uh, yeah, like, no, I'm, like right now, there's eating free harass from Caitlyn. Yeah, they're just too far up. I, I think it's because they're trying to bait in a fight so that Vi could engage, but they already saw Vi there. I I don't know why they keep trying to land that gank when they could just farm a little bit more passively, go back once they have a core item, and then win a fight. I agree. I agree. But how much gold does Draven have right now? Draven's at around 1,000 gold. So if he goes back in any time now really and gets some lifesteal gets some like boots one or, or something so that he's going to be able to actually deal with this caitlin harass every oh, trade oh, is going to go in his favor gank, gonna see <laughs> oh great actually i thought the fish was missing but they walked directly into it and it yeah. essentially landed onto both yeah raven did flash out of that so mm -hmm. uh good good uh good gank him out of that mid and show up see this is going to be we're really going to seek if He's gonna have to roam because because Olivia, especially with that egg. So she's probably gonna have to roam. We're gonna see if Anivia will be able to, you know, maybe get this tower. Mm -hmm. uh, not now, but next time Fizz does go to gank another lane. Yes. Now that being said, uh, the cooldown on all of Anivia's CC is quite long. So if, if Anivia ever wastes a Q and Fizz dodges it, Fizz should be able to just go in and pound away with his W active and and waste that egg. True. Just pop it once it's it's used. Because Anivia is incredibly, incredibly fragile. And at this point, like she, she doesn't have Chalice, she doesn't have anything that's going to make her any more tanky. So next time yeah, Fizz I'll, I'll has alt, I'd be interested to see if she tries to go for a, a kill mid, or if she goes and roams more. If I were her, I probably would roam, but baiting in and killing Anivia's is relatively easy. It depends on the Anivia, though. 
Vice coming mid and again going directly through the lane rather than going around. I, she's probably actually just wanting to go farm, so that, that would be the correct choice. So we're going to see Wukong tower dive the uh, Poppy, pick up an easy kill. He had to, he did have the burn flash to get away from Shivana, but... I Honestly, guess I don't think he needed to flash there. Um, I, I mean, it looked like she was backing away, mm -hmm. so uh, yeah, but, you know, she might have just turned around. She did have ult, she does have flash, so it was just better safe than sorry, but he probably should have waited till. He, he, he should have waited to see, but Wukong still had ult and was about three quarters health so uh, assuming he plays that properly i would expect him to be able to get away yeah Vi really needs to get six she's very behind xp wise she's yeah. almost level seven she's barely she's about three fourths away to level six exactly and she keeps trying to camp these lanes where it's like okay you're, you're getting 200 damage onto them you might be even getting a summoner skill but are you actually setting up an advantage? Because you're not getting level 6, you're not using your fantastic level 6 ganking potential. And now she's just giving up that buff. Like, I, I don't know what she's doing. She's not, uh, uh, yeah, so you, like, you know, you gotta... Vi is a very, Vi has very powerful level 3 and level 4 ganks, but really, she has, actually has, she has their best ganks are, like, at level 6. Mm-hmm. But I was she but she should have tried was getting some early ganks you know they didn't work out then she really should just try the rush level six because yeah. she was behind. Well, with anyone like a a Wukong or or a Draven Nami, every time you have that alt, it's pretty much a guaranteed kill because if you land your alt and they're paying a, in the least bit of attention, Nami's going to be able to land that bubble while they're knocked up. She's going to be able yep. to land the alt, and in that time, Draven has enough DPS he can just kill them. She is level six. And she's going out we'll on Poppy the top lane. We also going on Poppy. Wukong ult goes down. She is Poppy, so... Oh, looks like she will die. That was a she lot spent, down. though, for one kill onto, onto Poppy. Yeah. Uh, that was, I believe, two ults and a, and a flash. Yeah. Yeah. And Vi's flash is pretty important to her, because if you're just barely out of range, well, you've made her useless. I don't know why Wukong's trying to fight with this. Like, obviously he can kill if they go in as one, but he seems to be going in a little early. That's, uh, I think he was trying to bait it. Uh, okay. I guess Shivana's a bit smarter than that. Fizz did try going bot, he lands the fish on Draven. I think it's a dead Draven. Poor Caitlyn, no ult for her. Down that mid. Yeah, Nivea's playing that properly. Just shove in constantly every time Fizz tries to roam. Make an advantage elsewhere. Because she, she doesn't, she's not going to be able to follow him, especially just because if he decides to just stay, stop somewhere in the middle, he can ambush her pretty easily. Yep. But smart for her just not to follow because she can't safely. Yeah, in solo queue, you, you kind of have to get used to the abuse uh, if you're playing made of, oh my god, why are you not following? You just kind of have to explain to them. You realize, if they catch me out, I'm dead. Just pay attention to Mia's, try and play passively, and try and get an advantage elsewhere on the map if you can. And oftentimes your team won't understand that, but you as a mid laner have to understand that, and it seems Anivia's doing a pretty good job of that. That being said, though, it, it's impressive to me that Fizz is only 3 CS down, even with all this roaming. No, no. So I'm not sure if that's um, a mi Anivia missing last hits, or Fizz just showing up whenever the farm's there to be able to pick it up. I'm with, I think it's a, it's a bit of both, because Anivia does have pretty weak uh, early game farm. She hurt. I think it was two patches ago, they made it a particle go a lot faster. Mm -hmm. They like all like the swoopy effects, which made it go take forever. So I mean that's 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 one that's one thing. This bot lane here, I want to point out that Draven stayed alone. Karma tried to do an engage onto him, and then just kind of backed out, and Caitlyn didn't follow. If you're in a two v one lane like this, where the support stays alone, the AD carry stays alone, something like that, if you have the health to do it, just engage onto them. Don't let them stay like that because that's that's essentially a free kill for you if you play it properly. Not even that. If you can, for if, especially if the AD carry decides to stay by himself, you can force in the back. Especially oh, if yeah. he just got there, that's huge. It's essentially going like, "Hey, now you miss another three ways while I sit here and farm." Yeah, if that's you like see, a, like, let let's say Carmo tried to go ward up all the way up at Dragon, 
Draven Nami needs to realize that and just dive onto Kate, blow everything to push her out of lane, because Karma can't sustain that. Karma can't get Caitlyn back into the game by just, like, spamming heal. She's not Soraka. So you, you need to see advantages like that, whether it's artificial or created by yourself. Uh, Fi coming in for uh, bot Nami gank. Nami ult going down. Oh, it does actually land, but... Uh, that was a bit of mis miscommunication there. Mm-hmm, totally. Uh, good counter gank, though. Uh, just map presence from Shivana saying, Hey, looks like they might be ganking bot, and showing up, so that if they did land that engage, she's at least there to make sure it doesn't go completely to hell. Again, Draven's kind of off by himself. I'd be trying to land a lot of harass onto that. Yep. Draven, Draven's getting close to, he's at 100 uh, Draven stacks right now, so he really needs to burn those as fast as possible. Can we refer to them as Draven Bucks? Like, uh, it's Draven Bucks? No, Draven Bucks, like little casino Draven tokens. <laughs> I was probably calling them Dragon Stacks, but yeah, that, that also sounds better. A really good combo from them, just yeah. following in, picking off one target. They did split their focus a little bit, but just take the kill that you can get safely. At this point, if I were them, I probably would just take Dragon. There's no one to stop them. They know Shivana that Shivana is, is top. Yeah, I agree. That... Unfortunately, though, they like would need Draven in order uh... to have enough DPS. Fizz going on mid here. Uh, I've seen Requine do this a couple other times in solo queue. She tends to throw her ult, and then just walk away. If you're throwing your ult, that means you're going in. You don't back out when, once you throw it, or that's just a wasted cooldown. Vi's gonna catch him out a little bit here. We'll see if he's able to get away. I don't think he will. Oh, he did mess up the troll. They will pick up that kill. You, um... Well, as if you're playing against the Nivea, you really need to time that ult. I mean, that mm -hmm. the, the egg. It is, uh, I believe, five minutes. It's it's four minute cooldown. So just type it in chat. For sure. Oh, especially like that because he did get a little bit trolled. It, just, it literally just came up seconds before he died. He dived her. Yeah, you, you need to make sure all your cooldowns are up and you're in a position to go in. If not, don't use your alt. It's a, it's a short cooldown as far as alts are concerned. But it's such a key cooldown that you can't really afford to just waste it. It is your I have a free I mean, kill not, now. Not skill. only that, because he was he dove he dove her because he did because he didn't know the egg just got out mm -hmm. and he, he was he was forced to burn flash to get out. Exactly. He and she well, she wasted a her egg, which is technically a shorter cooldown than flash. Yes. So you just got to be mindful, especially against the Nivea. Yeah. That, Worth pointing yeah. out that uh, Caitlyn is up about 30 full CS right now. Wow. And, and because of that, she has a BF sword, whereas Draven only has a pickaxe. Besides that, their items are dead even. Uh, obviously, it has a potion, but it's not like that's going to make the difference here. So, no. a, as a bully lane, that's really, really good for them that they have that advantage, but they need to be pushing it while they have this item advantage, while they have this farm advantage. If I were them, like, I, if you look at how... Caitlyn is playing. She's constantly attacking the wave and pushing it in. If I were them, just stand past the minions, and if they try and ever come in for a CS, you just pop them, kill them right away. Yep. Problem is, though, Caitlyn does... Um, uh, ...does help with that damage. It's Draven... I, well, I think that they could actually, if Draven manages to catch a lot of axes, dodge some of the skill shots, they could actually win the trade. They but could, but if you still have uh, the net from like her. That, they're not going to win the trade. <laughs> yeah, see the fight coming in here. This is exactly what I'm talking about, where you just harass them in. Take three quarters of their health. Take all of it if you can. And now Fizz, this is free cleanup. If he, if they do get pushed into the tower and they stay, he could just throw a fish into that tri bush right now and probably pick up a triple. I don't think they're going to see it, though. Or use their their spidey senses are not tingling. That Nami ult not really needed. You need to use your Nami ult to either disengage an imminent fight or to engage one that's already being fought. Because you you need people essentially in melee range to follow up once it hits. It's not that long of a CC. Good Brian whoring out all the social media. Uh, that combo into Karma should be a completely free kill. Caitlyn needs to just get the hell out or she's going to be next.
she kind of stuttered there for a second and just went back in. I'm not sure what she's trying to do there. Maybe she was trying to bait for the Shivana, but even then, you're not going to be able to win that fight. Yeah, so right now, they should probably go for... It looks like they're going to go for Dragon. That's a very good call. Mm -hmm. Bot lane is dead, so this is a 2v4 situation. Yeah, that, that's a free Dragon. They just need to actually take it. And they are definitely going to do so now. Hopefully they didn't get stolen. <laughs> Yeah, looks like they're gonna pick that up very easily. That's a very that's a very good call. Yes, we are doing an RP giveaway yeah. every single Sunday. The prize will be drawn at the end of this match. We are also working on uh, we have some sponsors for our Tumblr giveaway that we're gonna be starting soon. We should have about two hundred dollars in league merchandise to give away. So that that'll be quite a large giveaway, but it's not quite ready yet. So if you wanna follow the Tumblr page, which is Brian is linked in the chat, you should be able to see that and uh, You'll get, notifi you'll get notified when we start it. User in your uh, Shivana's just standing on a ward here bot lane. Not, nothing really going to come of that. I, I don't know. A lot of these ganks just seem to be stand in a bush, stand in a bush. Oh, it's warded. And then they still kind of stay around. At this point, Anivia has pulled ahead a little bit of CS, but not to any significant degree. She has, though, evened out the actual kill score. She picked up a kill and two assists. Also has her Rod of Ages finished. Rod of Ages, mathematically speaking, is only really worthwhile if you finish it by about 15 minutes. User I didn't see the exact the time. Oh, looks like she finished it at 16.25. Uh, given their ability to stall the game, I would say that's still completely worthwhile. Uh, so good pick up onto her. I would expect to see her finish up... Okay, the turret going down there. Uh, Gank coming into Poppy, but not going to have it. As far as the Navy is concerned, though, I would expect her to finish up her Athenes now, and then after that, it's completely situational what she builds. A lot of Anivias opt to go more towards um, tanky utility damage, whereas others will go more for like a, a burn build with a, a Leandri, so that you just drop your alt and shred health. You always get like just the, you know, full on damage burst, but yeah. Uh, that being said, though, Anivia's scaling is not good. Really? Her, her scaling is very, very low. I guess the AoE, so I guess that would make sense. Yeah, it's not usually worthwhile to build full AP on her, because hmm. her Q is like 0.5 AP scaling. If you manage to get a double detonation, then it's a 1.0, so that's good. But that's a really hard... It, it's not reliable. And her E is 0.5, and of course doubled if they're chilled. And her <laughs> alt is, I believe, 0.25. So all said and done, you have like... A 1.7 AP scaling or something like that. Compared to most mages, that's pretty low given how hard that combo is usually to land. It's usually better to build something like uh, Leandries and just um, shred down their health, their, their front line when they try and dive you. That Poppy just able to dance around in the turret for ages. I don't think they're really going to get anything from this. Shivana's too low to really do much, and Poppy has no mana. If I were them, I would just just run at this point. You're not going to win that fight with no mana. Bot lane here looks like we have a bit of a fight coming out. Uh, gonna... Yeah, it looks like they were able to just land their, their full combo and harass onto Draven, pick it up. Very, very low, but perfectly safe for them, given their mobility and given their, their, just their potential of dealing damage. I do not like tier on Karma. Uh, Requiem gonna... Oh, very nice dodge there by, by Vi. I think Fizz is still gonna be able to get this, though. Nope, nope. Pops the Are flash of... Sir, go ahead. I, I, you might be a few seconds behind. <laughs> I am at 22.14. I am... Oh, I'm at 22.20, yeah. Um, you're like five seconds behind. I was just wondering if I saw that as it's well. It's because you respectated, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, I, I keep I, my internet's not very good at home. Um. Uh, Fate, as I mentioned, yes, it is a 2.0 AP scaling, but that relies on you making your Q go past them, then still hit them with a detonation, and then get in range to land your E. It's not a very reliable combo. Uh, it, it can do a lot of burst, but most mid majors have a hell of a lot more than 2.0 AP scaling. I mean, the thing is, a point two five on a that big of an AOE is not a very, it's not very, it's pretty good. Uh, I was, I would expect something actually very much lower, but yeah, I'll agree with you there. Her scalings are pretty much lower than 
let's say Ari or like Syndra who have like something close to like three, like 3.0 or even like 4.0. Yeah, it, it's usual for Burst Mage to have three or more AP scaling. Uh, good gank coming down four on one. They're going to be able to pick up the Draven first, good focus, and then translate that onto the Nami. Dragon is up in one minute. I'd expect them probably to, to try and push in this bot turret as much as they can, seeing as they see the rest of the team is all top. It looks like, looks like uh, Vi is backing, probably to protect that turret. Most likely, but e even just pushing it in is going to cancel out most of the push top lane. No, I agree. If they push, if they push bot in, that means that they can rotate mid, and they can probably set up for dragon extremely easily. Ooh, I believe they had that timed on blue buff, because they literally walked up to it right as it spawned and it wasn't warded. So good timing on picking up that blue buff. Timing allied as well as enemy objectives is very, very strong and, and will give you a very big advantage. At this point, there are three of the purple team bot lanes, so they're not going to be able to do that push as we mentioned. Dragon is in 25 seconds. I'm not sure which team got it, but I would hope they would have that time so that they can get some wards in there and make sure no one can sneak it. And yes, Draven did flash on top of Nami while the, the tip, the, not the tippers, the, the shark was on him. So don't do that. I've had people do that to me while I was channeling a skill, and I was like, you've got to be shitting me. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, just remember when you have the shark run away from your team, if possible. <laughs> yes. Do not kill them with you. Oh, three on one onto, onto Shivana here. There, nothing going to happen from it, though. Uh, no one bothers to use any of their CC. Ships passing it's in the night. Being Ooh, good bubble. They're not going to have enough damage to finish it. Fizz is coming down. Is that that is awarded? They will see him. They're going to back up. Bloodthirster is Are down we? on Kate, so she's going to heal up off of this and hopefully be able to, to set something getting, up. The as... Traven will die for being a little bit greedy. They had a ward in that push. They had in both pushes actually. Draven really should have. That really shouldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. Dra Draven needs to improve his map awareness for sure. Uh, he yeah. just he, he's a little bit too far forward. Yeah. No, that's that's gonna translate into a free dragon for blue team. Okay, now this is really interesting to me. Poppy is ahead 40 CS onto Wukong. Um, I mean, he's he's doing extremely well. Like he's far he's farming quite well. He is, but Poppy has no wave clear, so that that just really does shock me that he's letting Poppy get that much farm. Yeah, I, I think he's, he's probably maybe. spending too much time trying to kill the Poppy and not enough time farming himself. That's very true. That, that happens to me all the time when I play uh, champions like Nasus or people. Just they just, they just literally instead of like last hitting, they just spend their entire time auto attacking me while yep. I just ignore them. It's it's amusing, but yeah. But uh, t uh, the thing is that Wukong tends to have a really aggressive. Uh, he either has an extremely aggressive early lane, or especially against champions that he has to push out, especially on Squishier champions. And then he or he has a very passive lane where he's against tanky champions that he can't necessarily kill. Yeah, and at that point he's just scaling up so that he can actually alt in team fights. Draven really needs to improve on his uh, positioning right, like that. Yeah, they're able there's to no just land the shark directly onto him in the middle of the team. That should never yeah, there's, happen. There's no, there's no reason that 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 he should be that, he, that should happen. You know. That being said, so, great job by Vi staying directly next to the Anivia. Both of them standing in the middle of the alt and just saying, "If you want to kill me, come and get me." But you're gonna have to sit in my alt the entire time. Yeah, no, that's very good. Very good positioning. Wukong coming Wukong in behind. Oh, he's well, not I gonna go for it. Yeah, his ult is about 10 second cooldown still. If he had his ult, he could have snuck in behind them, knocked them up, and then between Anivia and um, Nami, they would have just been able to lock them in place for, for what would feel like an eternity. Interesting. Oh, okay, they are going to give it over to Fizz. I thought Caitlyn was going to take the blue buff for some reason. At this point, the only real wards on the map are one or two mid lane for purple team, and blue team, though, they have fantastic warding of their own jungle so that they can catch them out if they try and do anything. Oh, I apologize. There is, there is one purple ward near their blue. But... 
That being said, I if I were purple team, given the the assassination potential of a Wukong Vi, that sort of thing, I would get some wards into the enemy jungle and try and set up some yeah. plays there, where you can see them roaming to other lanes and just collapse the thing onto is, them. Yeah, like, the thing is, defensive wards are great, but the thing is, in the end, that's what they are. They're defensive wards. They don't. When you if you try to push, you're not going to have vision in the enemy jungle, and they can Wukong can easily. Well, not now, but Wukong could have easily done a flash, a flash ward over a wall. Or a Vi flash ult over a wall. Mm -hmm. So while it's defensive wards, and in the end of the day, they're great. They're and they're, they're and especially against I guess since they're assuming that they're gonna be defending against the push with that wave clear that uh, purple team does have. <laughs> oh, looks like they're gonna pick Fizz off. He's gonna. That that's a really good choice. Pretend that you're gonna collapse onto them bot lane, and then when Fizz tries to roam down and help because he's been doing that consistently, just jump in and, and pick him off. <laughs> Although they didn't manage to finish him. They are gonna uh, definitely get the Vi, or not the Vi, the Shivana. Nope. <laughs> oh, that was a beautiful wall from Anivia, I have to say. Uh, <laughs> she kind of... Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Different team. I, It was useful if she was blue team. <laughs> <laughs> that was um, that was an. I think what she was trying to do was she was trying to block Shivana yeah. off, but Shivana did have ult still. So I apologize. Apparently, I need my new glasses to get here. I right, Vi's gonna jump over it right in. Okay, did Vi disconnect because she was about to land on to Caitlyn and land a free kill? I I have no idea. I I think she disconnected. Oh, no, never mind, she's casting skills. Because she could have just jumped directly onto Caitlyn in that before her team got poked low. Like, uh, Poppy's gonna draw. I don't think Wukong, Wukong's gonna be able to kill his Poppy very slowly, but he will in time. Yeah, he has enough mana. It shouldn't be difficult. Oh, no, he's gonna get the chase. Because she does actually have that Trinity Force, so mm -hmm. she, yeah, she's much faster than him. Yeah. So they're gonna catch this Draven again. Problem is with um, playing oh. um, escapeless ADs like Jinx or or um, Lucian that don't really have like great escapes. That they get to be very mindful about your positioning. Yeah, Draven's made some rather poor decisions this game in terms of where he goes on the map. Whenever you're going somewhere on the map, you have to think of how likely is it that there's an enemy there. What is the likely outcome of me finding an enemy there? <laughs> and then you have to essentially weigh that against the the best outcome. Where if the yeah. best outcome is you don't die, well, why are you going there? And and a lot of these plays, it's just like, you're going to blue buff. Are you taking blue buff? Can you kill them at blue buff? Like, th there's no reason for you to be there, essentially. Wukong coming down. Might try and combo in onto, onto Caitlyn. Zolt is down at the moment, but... Uh... They will pick off Shivana and Karma very easily. Poppy's coming down to help, but let's see, they're just gonna try to run out. Good job on Caitlyn getting out of that, Dragon but yeah, the, the rest of them just kind of sacrificed themselves and were beefy enough that they had to give up chasing her. Dragon is spawning right now, though. Perfect timing for Purple Team to just get a free objective based on those numbers advantages that they just gained. Draven's opting to just farm bot lane. I'm fine with that, so he can get back into the game because he is still down about 50 CS. Yeah, no. Not, not a great choice by Poppy there. Um, once again, you need to check if that to check if make sure Nivia doesn't have her passive. Mm -hmm. quite a bit actually and unfortunately just, Fizz did kinda, not land kind of going in one at a time yeah I, I, this, I, I even see that in plot one where like, oh yeah like people just want to be the star so they just keep going in as like I'll save you well your, your team's not there wait for them I mean it's also because I guess they think they can pick off that one person and then mm -hmm. yeah trading kills is pretty much never worth it the only time picking like trading deaths is worth it is like they're pushing to end. Oh, I killed their AD carry. Now they can't end the yeah. game. I will get. Yeah, uh, yeah. that's. I mean, that's essentially the whole point of assassins is exactly. you trade your your assassin for their AD carry and then some extra damage on their team. And that's why I play AP support Tristana. <laughs>
It's so dumb, but people fall for it every single time. Because they're just like, oh, you have no damage, and because you don't do anything, and then you jump on them and one-shot them. Mm. Anivia definitely pulling ahead in farm now, which is to be expected. But I'm interested to see what she sort of leverages that into. As I mentioned, she did go for the Leandries, which is pretty much standard in what I would expect on Anivia. She has many build paths, but this is sort of what you normally see. Um, I, I'm interested to see what she tries to do next, though. She could go for a Void Staff uh, if, if Blue Team starts building MR, which they really haven't as of now. Or she could go towards more Burst with a, a Death Cap sort of a, a style. Or even Tank. That time it was a very good wall, just making sure Fizz couldn't get out. Yeah, Nivea's doing very good positioning here, just making sure, yeah, my team might be dying, but I'm staying safe. And trying to put out some damage. Yes, Guns for Doug is the second caster. Well, I mean, um, you know, uh, trades are fine, especially if you can take if you can trade a high value target for like a low priority target, like a support, or even if, if you can trade uh, your AD carry who's what behind. For their aid carry, it's doing more damage. The problem is we're talking about like trading when you're going one v four, like maybe try to secure a kill or something like that, which is not, which is highly improbable. And that's what that's what we're talking about. Trades that bad. You have, to, you have to weigh the likelihood of trading. That's the problem when you go one v four. Oh, nice pickup on on that. Unfortunately, though, that was Karma just staying way too close. You don't need to stay in melee range of a Wukong when you're when you're CCing them. Yeah. Looks like they're sending three down to try and stop this Draven, but she, he is going to get the tower for free. And it looks like this time he is not going to be greedy. He's just going to run out and uh, probably buy some items. Uh, I, I wanted to see him get a Last Whisper. He, he's rushed Bloodthirster, Zeal, Infinity Edge. Usually you build Last Whisper before Infinity Edge. Infinity Edge is like a luxury fourth item. It's great, but you need the other items to make it really work. Shivana clearing out Baron there. I'd be interested to see if Purple Team does want to do a Baron. With Okay, I I'm assuming he's building up his Phantom Dancer now before he finishes his Last Whisper on, on Draven. Again, you, you need a way to to deal with the armor. Fizz has has Hourglass, so he's going to have some armor. Um, I would have... I would have. Um, the standard build now is um, Bloodthirster. I'm almost every single AD is like Bloodthirster, Phantom Dancer, Trinity Force, and Last Whisper. The one that uh, I've seen things. most AD carries build and, and highly recommended was that... You always go Bloodthirster, Zeal, Last Whisper, and then you finish your third damage. Really? Or you finish like Phantom Dancer and your last item. Because usually you need it for the mid-game team fight because you're going to be dealing with their tanks. Because they're going to be diving onto you. Uh, the problem right now is Kate has very zero to no attack speed. So while she hits like a truck, she only hits like a truck every second. Oh no, I'm referring to Draven. Oh yeah, no, no I'm, just, I'm just saying right now, like, uh, Caitlyn does, I guess Caitlyn does a lot of damage, mm -hmm. but she doesn't do it very often. Yeah, the, the Infinity Edge is just way, way, way too early. You, ne you need some sort of an attack speed yeah. item, whether you go for, uh, whether you go for Static Shiv or Phantom Dancer, that's up to you and what you're trying to accomplish on your team, but yeah. you need one of those before Infinity Edge, every time. Yeah, no, a little bit caught out here. Uh, they are able to land the alt onto Wukong. Should be able to pick that up, actually. Unfortunately, Shivana does go down trying to protect the inhib. Not actually going to be able to do anything with it. Draven is opting to go back at full health while they're trying to push the inhib. Uh, I, I don't agree with that. They, they, he could have stayed. They would have got the inhib and could have cycled straight to Baron. They're full health. Like, 
I, I don't know. They, they could have taken Dragon, they could have taken Baron with that. Using the numbers advantage they have with Shivana being down and Draven being full health and a lot of damage built, I would have expected them to take an objective rather than him going back to finish his Phantom Dancer. I've somewhat come around on Phantom Dancer only because of the tanky meta. Uh, Shiv, I still feel, is better if you're doing sort of a, a dueling split push style of AD carry. But those have pretty much vanished now that every jungler, every top, is an, essentially an unkillable behemoth. And because of that, Phantom Dancer is viable again. It was oh, Sorry, it was always viable, but it's almost always a better choice now. But again, that's more to do with the meta rather than the item itself. I wonder. Um, looking at their team, I'm wondering if it might be better for one of them to maybe split push a little bit, because just... I would... Yeah, the um, purple team really should just have just one of them split push because of how much AoE CC purple team does have. Mm -hmm. And for me, I would say yeah, it should be Poppy split pushing, because Poppy can duel anyone. Yeah. No, Poppy really should have duel. Should have split push. Because yeah. that team fight is very strong. I'm so they're just going to win here. Yeah, they're definitely going to end the game. This is an ace, and they can just go ahead. They can tank the turrets if they really have to. Um, uh, they, obviously, they won't need to. Yeah, if turrets I were them, I would have probably sent Poppy top, just perma push top. And if they try and send someone to duel Poppy, well, that's a kill for Poppy. Like, she can duel quite literally anyone in the game with her alt and with her passive. Uh, unless she's seriously behind. And she does have really, really good farm. She's very low score, but she has Trinity Force, Hydra, for some reason, Hextech. I would have gone tank over that. Yeah, oh, I actually have to go, so okay. it was very fun spectating this game. Uh, good luck to you uh, for the rest of the night, and hope everyone has fun. See yeah, you thanks for helping. No problem, man. User disconnected from your channel. Disconnected. Alright, so I'm going to go over the builds and everything here. Uh, just reminding people that this is a friendly environment. There is no trash talking, no negative attitude allowed. If you are being rude and abusive to your team, I will give you a warning timeout or a perma ban from the workshop. Uh, from I've received from multiple reports here that Caitlin is being a little bit rude that game, just kind of just throwing stuff around at her team. That's not acceptable. I'm going to exclude you from the next game. We're not banning you by any means, but just settle down a bit, and we'll get you into the next game if we need to. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to say not not for the moment. As far as build order is concerned, Poppy opted to go for Hydra, Trinity, Force, and uh, Ninja Tybee. That's perfectly fine. I don't understand the Hextech Revolver, though. I'm assuming he was trying to get a Gunblade or something. Uh, at that point, build Tank on Poppy. Build like a Guardian Angel build Spirit Visage if you really need it, uh, like versus their, their magic damage, or build quite literally any tanky item, and you'll be much, much more able to, to be useful to your team. Uh, Karma, I mentioned earlier, I don't like tier on her. She didn't even build it into anything. She already had Athenes and Chalice, like a Chalice into Athenes, so you don't have mana issues. Why are you building tier? I would have gone, um, if you want to go a Chalice build, that's fine. It, it's a perfectly valid choice. You have your Sight Stone. Where's your Gold Pretend? I would have uh, finished up... Sorry, I, I would have finished up my Talisman of Ascension so that I have a move speed buff for my team. I have increased gold generation so I can get more items. And then I would build into Magic Penetration. Source Boots, Haunting Guys, finish the Haunting Guide into Leandries. That is a massive amount of damage. You're going to be able to absolutely shred enemy teams, and you're going to have the CDR to make sure your team stays alive and, it, and that you are useful to them from, from the CDR items you have. Requine's build, pretty standard. I would have expected to see her build into a Void Staff next. Uh, to deal with their tanks, or at that point she could even build more more offensive, like with the death cap. Uh, pretty standard though, no real complaints. Her roaming was good early game. She kind of fell off late though, where she just wasn't farming, was falling a little bit behind. Caitlyn did very very well in f terms of farm and poke, but I feel that 
Karma Caitlyn could have zoned a lot better in in terms of just not pushing the lane, just freezing it, standing past it, and punishing them any time that Draven tried to go for a CS. Shivana, um, I have no real complaints with her build. It's okay. I would have expected her to be a little bit more tanky, though. Like, there's no Spirit Visage on her. There's no Sunfire. There's no Randuins. There's... It, I don't know. I, I just would have expected to see a little bit more tanky there. I would usually also expect to see um, Boots 5 so that you can land more ganks, but that's fine. It's still a valid choice. Nami, pretty standard build. I don't generally like Chalice on supports. Both opted to do it this time. They're both really reasonably mana-hungry supports, so I, I get it. Personally, I feel it's not worth my while, but build what you like. I would also just warn you, though, that that is 40% CDR between those two items alone. Why do you have Boots of Lucidity? You could have gone Boots 5, you could have gone Source Boots. You're, you're overlapping your CDR there. That is a lot of wasted gold. Completely, completely wasted gold. So uh, I just keep an eye on that. Never, ever do that. Wukong, pretty standard build in, in terms of like a damage DPS sort of uh, a Wukong. It's a, it's a choice. I have no complaint with it. I would have opted to see him a little bit more tanky, though, just so that he could be that hard initiate. He goes in, lands an alt, Vi goes in, Anivia follows up, that sort of thing. They, they had a lot of AoE CC potential there. I would have expected to see him just a little bit more beefy to land that engage, but he did very well. Anivia, great, great positioning. We had high praise for her. Um, a couple issues with the wall, but that happens. I'm assuming she was building into death cap next. That's fine. No, no real complaints there. Draven, I would have said Last Whisper earlier. Infinity Edge is usually only worthwhile late game. Same to Caitlyn. She built in, in Infinity Edge before any attack speed. Uh, this is not usually worth it. Get get your Phantom Dancer or Static Shift, whichever you opt to go for, and then finish that up. Usually Bloodthirster, attack speed item, then Last Whisper, then Infinity Edge, and then tank items. Uh, Vi, standard tanky, tanky, tanky build. Did great with it. Uh, very Almost unkillable late game, so good job there. We are going to...